Our office is so messy. You know what I want to do right now? But I can't do that because I'm an adult and I have to deal with adult things, which is actually a pretty good segue into today's video the time I almost got sued. Let's talk about it. There's a little, oh my God. There's receipts on the ground too. There's receipts everywhere. Okay, what are you guys gonna learn in today's video? Well, number one, we're gonna talk about the nightmare that was me getting sued over a photography contract. It's emotional, get your popcorn ready. Two, we're gonna talk about the lessons that I learned from that experience. Or at least that's what my therapist likes to tell me, to reframe it as you learned something from this rather than it being a traumatic moment that I have nightmares about. And number three, I don't want this to ever happen to you because it was so horrible. So I made a checklist of things that you can check off while you're going through future contracts or building contracts with your photography clients. So we're gonna go through all that today and these receipts. Okay. <sighs> okay. This story needs context for you to understand how I got almost sued. Let's start from the beginning. There's company A. They're trying to sell a product. They have all the money. So company A, the big guy, the big guy. Company A hires company B. This is the agency that does all the marketing, ads, social media, print ads, billboards. They do all that stuff and they handle and manage the marketing. Then there's company C. They specialize in just video production and photography and managing photographers. And then there's us, the photographer right here. Company D or today, company me, Chris Howe. Let's just imagine how this would work from a financial perspective. Let's say the budget for the project is $10,000. Hi, we have $10,000 to market our product. So the company goes, sure, we can do that. Let's take about 50% of that budget. So let's say it's $10,000. Now we have $5,000 left. They go, you know what? We need to hire out the photographers for this project. Let's only give them 25% of that budget. Now you have $2,500 for this company to now find the right photographer for the project. So what's left for the photographer at the end of it? If you're lucky, in that case, you might get $1,000 or $500. Awesome. So I'm gonna use all these lenses to explain how company C tried to sue me, company D, for just trying to work with company B. You following? Same. Okay, so I am just stoked. Company Me has always wanted to represent and work for Company A. I think they make some of the best products in the world and I think this will do so much for my career. I, I worked really hard and I think it turned out great. Company C sends the photos to Company B and shows Company A. And literally Company A and B are like, so company C is stoked. They're like, let's hire you for a bunch of projects. So I keep working and I'm all excited. Oh, look at all the cool opportunities. But company B sends me an email and they say, hey, we've dissolved our relationship with company C and we just wanna work with you. And they're like, here's the budget for the next project. And literally I'm like, Woo! I finally get to work with company B and A directly. I've always wanted to do this and I'm making the money I've actually wanted to make. So I work on a project with company B and A and company C goes, we saw your project. You stole our client. You signed a whole do not compete. And I'm over here like, I didn't sign a do not. I don't know why I changed my voice for this. I didn't sign it. Why am I still doing it? I didn't sign a do not compete. I checked all my documentation. It never said that anywhere. And they go, check this one page that we never sent you. We actually have a do not compete clause that you signed when you first signed up for our website. We're thinking of pursuing legal action. Three weeks 
I sat there every night, not sleeping, so stressed out, the most anxiety I've ever had in my entire life. I was so stressed. Uh, uh, why? So three weeks later, I get an email from company C. And they were like, we were gonna pursue legal action, but we decided as a company, it's not in our best interest. We're not going to sue you. I was like, you couldn't have told me this three weeks ago. I literally haven't slept. They're like, we have two options for you. Option one, you only work with us, but you can never ever work for company A ever again. And company C had some cool opportunities of a lot of cool brands they were working with. And then the second option, which is the option that I went with, you can continue your relationship with company A, but you never work with us, company C ever again. And I said, I'm gonna work with company A. And that's the last I ever heard of them. And that's the story of how I almost got sued. What did I learn from this experience? And what can you take away from me almost getting sued. Essentially, know and understand what you're signing. I think it's so easy in today's age because when we download an app or we sign up for a website, the like little terms and agreements come up and you literally just scroll and you're like, I checked it, I read it, I promise. You just wanna get to the free thing or the free website or start working. You wanna get to that end goal as quickly as possible. Don't overlook the contract part and what you're signing when it comes to your career. Because that one little line in that contract about do not compete ended up actually screwing me over in the long run. And the second thing is get a copy of the thing that you're signing so you can refer to it later. The issue that I experienced is that I signed one document, there's another document that they never gave me that they ended up bringing afterwards. Make sure you have a copy of everything. Which is a good segue into the PDF kit that I created, which is essentially a checklist that you can go through when you're reviewing a contract and or if you're making a contract. And again, this is a free download. Thank you Adobe for sponsoring this video. I'm going to give a quick blanket statement here. This is not legal advice. Talk to a professional when you're finalizing your agreements. So what I've done in this PDF kit is I've covered all the main things that should be included in a contract and what you should be looking for and the things that you should be thinking or questioning about the contract before you sign it. So let's start with the first one. Agreement overview. This is usually like the number one thing when you get a contract. Who is the agreement between? It's usually the client's name and you. If you ever get sued, these are the entities involved in that agreement. Next is the scope of work. Be very detailed here, talking about timeline, location, the services, and the deliverables, and make sure everything is listed in as much detail as possible. Compensation, we all wanna get paid, so make sure that number's somewhere in there. I once went through a situation where I just agreed on the phone. I was like, ah, oh, we'll, we'll do it for this much money. We didn't get a contract. Well, that screwed me over because the client said it was half the budget when the project was done. Don't be past Chris Howe. Have this in writing. Get your project rate and get your deposit also. Is it 30% up front? Is it 50% up front? And do your best to get that deposit before you start work. This way, you know the client is serious. When can you expect to be paid? Typically, it's 30 days. I don't know why. It's 2020 and we can send money like this. Here's money. Why does it take 30 days? I don't know, let's change that. Outline any late payment fees. This line is here just to actually put pressure to get the payment on time. Briefly talk about permits, who's involved with getting location permits as well as model releases. Is it the client, is it you? Just have the conversation there and then put that in the contract somewhere. The next section is ownership rights. This means who owns the final product. Typically the client will own the final deliverables that you get them. They will not own the raws, they will own the final things that you agreed upon. Have the conversation of where those items are going to be used. Are they gonna be used in print, social media, internal, online, printed on a giant billboard. All of those have different rates and it's important to outline that in a contract. And for how long? Is it two months? Is it six months? Is it a year? Are the deliverables exclusive? Is the client the only person who gets to use them or is it non-exclusive? Exclusive, that's more money. Non-exclusive, less money, but maybe to more people, so then more money. Have the conversation about insurance. Are you responsible for insurance or is it the client's responsibility? Sometimes clients have insurance policies that cover freelancers, someone like you. The next part is usually a line about liability. Make sure you understand who is liable if an accident happens. Is it the company, is it you? This should be clearly stated. Almost always there's a cancellation policy just in case we don't agree, the client and the freelancer. This way either you can get out of the situation or they can get out of the situation. And how much notice do you have to give each party involved before the contract is terminated? Last few things, governing law. What does the contract abide by? So for us, we typically deal with Ontario law, so we put governed by Ontario law. Have a little note about the assignment of the parties involved in this project. Make sure you note that you are either the person doing it all 
or that you're also going to be hiring out other freelancers. Last and obvious things, get your contracts signed. Send it through apps like Adobe Sign where you have documentation of both parties and when they signed it. So these are the, the general things that you will see in a contract. So review this, do a checklist, consult a lawyer, do not just consult me in this document, but this, this will give you a better understanding of how it works. If you guys wanna download this, links are below. And thank you guys so much for watching this week's video. I literally look forward to this part way too much. Can you guys hear that? I can't hear it either because my anxiety has disappeared. There's no more stress because we cleaned up the office. Uh, at the starting of this video, this is what you could hear if you put the microphone up really close to my brain. <laughs> but now it's gone. It's no longer there because we neatened up everything. So guys, if you wanna make sure that I never do that screaming sound again and damage your ears, press the like button. It makes such a huge difference. Like, please subscribe and hit the bell, all that other stuff. But actually, the like button, because the algorithm's all like, I know that you say all these things all the time, but really, the like button's the only thing we care about these days. So, here, I'm gonna take your hand to press it.